If you have any Intel hardware on your computer, it could be your CPU, your GPU, could also be that you have an Intel neural processing unit, then we can actually like optimize the YOLO model for increased inference speed and we can get up to 2x more performance. So we're basically just getting a two times faster model by using the OpenVINO framework for exporting our model into an optimized framework, specifically optimized for the hardware that it's running on. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the integrations tab, we have all these different integrations that integrate with Autolytics. And again, it's just a few lines of code that you need to run and you have everything running. So this is from Intel Open Window Framework. We can export the YOLO models into this format. So it can be anything. It can be a TensorFlow model, Paddle Paddle, PyTorch, Cafe, ONNX, MXNet, Keras. We throw them into the Open Window Optimized Framework that's going to optimize the model to run specifically on Intel hardware. So this is very useful because not a lot of optimization frameworks have CPU usage and you can actually run real-time update detection with an Intel CPU. You can do it with the DPUs as well, VPUs, FPGAs, all of it here runs cross-platform as well. We have another video here going over the YOLO V8 model inference. Now we have YOLO 11 and just going through all the steps in detail, how we can run it as fast as possible. But also another important thing is quantization. So this is an example of how we can export it. I'm going to show you in a Google Colab notebook in just a second. We have different export arguments. We need to set the image size. If you want to use half precision, floating point 16 bit in eight, if you only want to have the smallest model possible, we can do go in and do quantization. If we specify half precision here as true, that is also quantization. It basically just means that we reduce the number of bits that we have per weight in our model. We can have dynamic input sizes. We can use non-maximum suppression, batch sizes if we want to optimize it for running more batches. Could be that you have a video where we just want to process the images as fast as possible. We already have the images. We can just load them in from a video, batch process them, take eight frames, process them at one time, get the output and process it for our business use case or the project that we are trying to solve. We specify the data set that we want to use it for. This is very important if you want, want to run quantization, especially in eight calibration. Then we need to go in and calibrate our model based on our data set with also our labels as well. So here's just a warning, make sure to go through this and all that. We need to have Intel chips that support it. So if you're running AMD or whatever CPU on your toaster or whatever, it probably doesn't work. But if you have an, any Intel hardware, it's going to run directly out of the box. If you pay install Autolytics, export it, all the imports, everything is taken care of. You don't have to do anything. So the benefits of OpenVINO, I've already mentioned those, it's performance, support for different hardware executions, model optimizer, and it's just easy to use. There's not really any excuse. Once you want to run your models in production, you need to optimize them for a specific hardware that it's going to run on. Because you can get two, three, four X inference speed increase by basically doing nothing than running a few commands with Ultralytics. So yeah, here we can see some comparisons with OpenVINO, ONNX, Torch Script, and PyTorch. If you just take a look at maybe the medium size model in between, we can see we almost get 2x faster inference speed. So here, this is how many milliseconds it takes to process a single image. So the lower, the better. So we can see here around 80, 80 milliseconds to process a single image. And this is on an Intel Core i9. If we're running the small model, I'll probably say around 25 milliseconds. That's over 30 frames per second running on a CPU. Usually we only get this performance if we run it on GPUs. CPU is significantly easier to run with, but also significantly cheaper to run with compared to GPUs. So you could have a Nuke computer just sitting there processing your AI computer vision models videos in real time. You can go through more details here. You can see the different Intel hardware if you want to run Intel GPU, different types of them. Also, if you want to have a neural processing unit, and it really depends on the specific hardware that you have if you want run quantization. So for example, here we have the PyTorch model that is in floating point 32. If we just compare it one by one, apple to apple with OpenVINO, uh, floating point two, we can just see the crazy inference speed boost here that we get. Now this is on an Intel GPU. 
we can see the CPU and we can also see a neural processing unit which gets even more significant speed up. So this neural processing unit is specifically made for just processing matrix multiplication going on under the hood when we are running deep neural networks. You can see some other hardware here, significant speed up, even just on the, on the, on the, on the GPU here. You can see CPU around 2x here, I'll probably say around five to seven, maybe eight X inference speed compared to the out of the box PyTorch model. Let's now jump straight into our Google Colab notebook and see how we can run some of these things. I've created a new notebook. I've just paid all autolytics. This is everything that you have to do. And then we can run this OpenVINO formatting. It creates this YOLO 11N OpenVINO model. So it's a folder structure that has this output. We have our YAML with our metadata, we have a bin file and we have an XML file. If you want to know more details about that, it's inside the documentation. So this is everything that we have to do right now. Let's try to format it and see some of the arguments. Let's go up to the arguments again. There we go. Let's try to run half precision. So this is floating point 16. And you can specify all these different parameters. You can use the Python command. You can use the CLI command if you want to run that right out of the box. There we go. We have our half position. We just need to set that equal to true. There we go. Let's rerun our export. And it's going to run quantization. So usually the default bit is 32. Now we can quantize it down to 16 bit. So it basically reduces the model size by 2x and almost gets a 2x increase in speed just by doing that and then further optimizing it to run on the Intel hardware. Now we can see the model has been saved in 5.7 seconds. I did nothing. I just ran this single command and has saved it in here. Now I can go in and basically just download these files. You can download the whole folder and so on. And then we can run it on your own local hardware. I don't have an Intel CPU on my end, but if we go in here, I'm just going to grab this script. I'll create a local script. Everything will be available. I'll just paste it in here. So if you're using Google Colab, they have Intel CPUs. I'm on a Mac, so it doesn't have an Intel CPU, but you can just test it here in a Google Colab notebook. So we have some comparisons that we can just run through. This is the YOLO OpenVINO. It's going to use a webcam or whatever source we specify. Right now, we're going to run some videos. So while I'm talking here, I'm just going to upload a video so we can process that. Instead of Imshow, we can run Imshow here in Google Colab. It's just going to load in our frames from a video source. We run our prediction. And when we create our model, you can see here we have a model. This is the most important thing in here. We have a YOLO, YOLO specify our model. It can either be our base model or if we specify our folder path here, then it's basically going to use Intel CPU. Could also run a GPU, you can just specify GPU here or NPU, depending on what you have available on your system. So this is everything that we have to do. It even checks here automatically if you run the PyTorch file or the ONNX file, it's gonna run with that. If none of those are available, it will run here with the folder. So all I have to do is basically just drop in my model we copy paste the folder path. There we go. We have our video file that we're going to process. I just upload it here. We should be able to run it. It will open up a video, set up our model. We're going to go in optic detection mode. We're using batch size one inference on CPU. We process all our frames here. And this is the model that we're specifying. So it's going to run with this hardware. And it should be done generating in just a second. It will generate an output file. We can take a look at the results. If you run it local, you will see the detections running at the same time. And that's pretty much it. We can then go in and take a look at the different comparisons. I already have a video which has been processed where we can see the side by side comparisons. So if I just run it here, we can just pause it at any point. On the top left side, we have the PyTorch model, floating point 32. We have our own next model. It's slightly faster, 
or at least in some cases it can be slightly faster, not in this exact frame here that I paused it. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's a bit slower. Looks like on this hardware it's generally a bit slower. The open window, you can see you almost get 10 frames per second more. So that's like a 0.5 increase or like 1.5 increase if we just multiply it. And if we run our quantization with open window, we basically just squeeze out 2x more. And this is running on a CPU. If you run it on a GPU, you're going to get an even more significant speed up. Here we see 47 on this specific video here, 22 milliseconds. This is over 2x speed up and we have 20 frames per second with the PyTorch model. This is still pretty good out of the box, real time processing, but we don't get above the 30 frames per second unless we use OpenVINO on our Intel hardware. Let's go back here again. It's almost done processing the video, but it's basically just the exact same video as we have here. This is pretty awesome. Make sure you use Open window, if you have any Intel hardware, you're playing around with the Autolytics models, want to run these models in production, there's no reason to not use them. You don't really lose any performance or accuracy. You just get a way faster model. Go ahead and check it out. Everything is available in the documentation on Intel side with Open window. They have the GitHub repositories and everything. It's a few lines of code and you have it up and running on your own system.